our web mini series. My name is Sarah Black. I work for the Army Corps of Engineers in the regulatory office. I do permit evaluation for Eastern Branch, which means I typically review permits on the eastern side of the state of Michigan. Today I'm going to talk about general permits for bank stabilization, which typically includes seawalls, riprap, and revetments. Our first general permit are for seawalls and backfill. To qualify for this general permit, replacement seawalls must be within a foot waterward of the existing seawall. There's a lake-specific maximum waterward extent for new seawalls. For example, on Lake Huron, that is 581 feet. Um, there are new seawalls or replacements over 200 feet Eagle, the state agency, must issue first. Jake is going to put in the chat, or our, our admin is going to put into the chat the link if you want to see the full terms and conditions for this permit. We also have a regional permit for riprap. The requirement for that is there can be, cannot be for more than 300 feet of shoreline, no more than five feet waterward of the ordinary high water mark, no placement in wetlands, and a maximum slope of one to one and a half. Eagle, the state agency, must issue first if it's steeper than one to two. Our nationwide permit, another kind of regional permit, um, is Nationwide 13 Bake Stabilization. The key criteria for this project would, it would need only the minimum amount of material needed for erosion protection, which I'll go into more on the next slide. No more than 500 feet of shoreline or more than one cubic yard of fill placed below the ordinary high water mark per linear foot of shoreline. No fill in wetlands. And again, the full terms and conditions will be placed in the chat. The conditions that are asterisk, such as the 500 feet of shoreline, can be waived by the Corps after agency coordination, but that will take an extra 10 to 25 days. One of the key criteria for Nationwide 13 is that we can only authorize the minimum amount of material needed for erosion protection. Here's an example of a probable permit. On the right side, nationwide permit review would only allow enough backfill to create a slope that would that would be that one to two slope or a slope that could retain the riprap in place. On the left, where there's significant backfill, more than what would be needed to place riprap, that would not qualify for a regional permit and that, it, that review would be approximately 120 days. An example of a project that would need Nationwide 13 instead of one of our regional permits is riprap at the toe of the slope. Not only did this person need riprap, but also this larger stone that is waterward of the riprap. Another example are sandbags. Um, with high water, we've seen an increase of sandbag applications, which are placed at the toe of the bluff. For any project for bank stabilization, the core requires project drawings. These include a plan view and a cross section. All the relevant information must be clear and legible. Scale drawings are best and show all dimensions on project drawings. Here's an example. Notice that all the proposed work is shown with the dimension drawn. In this example, it is riprap that's 50 feet across and 5 feet wide. If you have any temporary construction measures, this could be a turbidity curtain, temporary stockpiling. For example, here the riprap could be stockpiled between the house and the, um, and the bluff. Any existing site conditions, the water level and the date observed at that level, the ordinary high water mark, any existing structures, distance from a proposed work to a permanent fixed point, a 
permanent fixed point is typically a house or it could be the road. Property lines, a north arrow, and a scale bar if possible. Cross section. A cross section is a side view and it shows existing and proposed conditions. If possible, it shows both the eagle and the core ordinary high watermark elevations, the toe of the bluff if applicable, and it shows elevation information in relation to a specific datum or the water level on the day specified by you. Here's an example. This person shows the depth of the water 12 inches on a specific day, February 2nd in 2021, but also provides the water elevation, 577.8 feet. They show the distance, the width, and the height of the riprap and the existing shoreline. Here's a good example of a cross section that shows the existing slope and the proposed slope after the riprap is placed. It shows where they're going to dredge out, um, place to key in towstone, and then they're going to use that excavated material as backfill. It shows not only the distance from the shed, but also where the core ordinary high water mark is versus where the existing water level is. Note that where the water level is and the ordinary high water mark are not necessarily the same. It always helps to provide photos. When proposing shore protection or bank stabilization, drawing should show the volume of fill below the plane of the ordinary high water mark and the volume of fill waterward of the toe of the bluff. So in the smaller square, it shows what is underneath the ordinary high, but also remember that the ordinary high watermark is also a vertical plane showing what is on the bluff. Here's something we would consider a fully drawn drawing. It shows not only the dimensions of the permanent stone, but any temporary stone, like a temporary breakwater, the amount of cubic yards that are dredged, and the height of the bluff, and the amount of total rock or stone. When writing a narrative about your construction, or also in depicting in drawings, it's important to show the construction sequence, types of equipment, do you have to build an access route down the bluff? Dredge methods, such as hydraulic or mechanical, material handling, the sequence of work, and again, temporary construction measures, such as stockpiling, like that temporary breakwater, any side casting, or silt curtains. Here's some pictures of temporary construction measures. The silt curtain, sometimes called a turbidity curtain, a temporary access road, or in the picture on the left, this is a temporary side cast of dredging. It's important to note all of these in your drawings and provide dimensions and volumes. I would like to stress the point about the core ordinary high water mark. The ordinary high water mark never changes but the current water elevation does. This is this year, but that could be last year. Although it's important to depict the water elevation, also make sure you note where the ordinary high water mark is. It helps to put next to the water the date that you took the picture or that you drew your drawing. Here's some examples of where the ordinary high water mark is. Note that the water level does not necessarily correspond to where the ordinary high water mark is. On seawalls, it can be easier to tell due to the lines on an aged seawall. Where my arrows are depict where the ordinary high water mark is. If you're unable to measure the depth at your site, you can always look on NOAA's website where they will have gauges closest to your site 
which can represent your water level. This link will be in the chat box. I always urge applicants to submit photos to show existing conditions. They can show um, right away whether a wetland is present and possibly which regional permits may or may not apply. On the photo on the left, there's no wetland, so a regional permit could be issued for riprap. However, in the picture on the right, it shows that a wetland is present and a regional riprap permit cannot apply. Photos also help show current site conditions and may eliminate the need for a site visit, which could, in theory, speed up your application. We're happy to assist with any questions about permit applications and permit requirements. A map of our field offices with contact information can be found at this link, or you can contact us at this phone number or email. I'll now take any questions. So I received a question that says, can you discuss a little more about using the NOAA website? Is there a way to estimate the ordinary high watermark with it? So the ordinary high watermark um, correlates to an elevation, typically, and that can be found on our website. But NOAA will tell you the existing water levels. So for example, on a specific time and date, it will tell you the water elevation at that gauge. Um, last year, the um, water was quite high and, and near the ordinary high water mark, but it's not necessarily the same. Sarah, I received a question. Um, apologies, it seems I was on mute and I was talking to myself. Um, so I received a question that is, when is nationwide permit 13 up for renewal, um, and is there any consideration being uh, given to increasing the one cubic yard per linear foot limit for shoreline stabilization projects? Nationwide 13 is up for renewal in 2022. Um, and as for increasing the limit, I encourage you when we put those out on public notice, for you to comment on that. Uh, we record all public comments from our public notices and take those into consideration. Uh, thank you, Sarah. I haven't received any additional questions. Um, for anyone that's interested in um, sending a question and might be having trouble figuring out how to do that, um, if you go to the lower right-hand um, side of your screen, there should be an icon, and um, it'll say chat next to it. If you click that, you can send a question to everyone, or you can send it directly um, to Reg Admin and or the present, uh, presenter, Sarah Black. Um, so we'll wait for a few minutes to see if there's any additional questions. Um, we received a question about will the slides be available. Um, this presentation is actually um, being recorded, so we will have this presentation um, on our website, um, so they will be accessible. And then um, Sarah, I'm not sure those uh, you'd have the information for where that's going to be posted. Yes. So on our regulatory page, um, there is a folder called Outreach, 
Um, and we typically post the PDF versions of these presentations, and we will include um, a link probably within a week to our YouTube channel that will have this posted. The recording, I mean. I think that might be it for questions, unless you've received any um, directly, Sarah. Uh, no, just the one from about Noah. So um, I think that's it. Well, thank you all for attending today. Um,